हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस थर्ड एंड कंक्लूडिंग लेक्चर ऑन पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर इन प्रीवियस टू लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड हिज क्रिटिक ऑफ नेशनलिज्म एंड आल्सो हिज व्यूज ऑन कॉस्मोपॉलिटिज्म टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस हिज व्यूज ऑन आइडिया ऑफ मैन एंड ऑल्सो द डिबेट दैट फेमस डिबेट बिटवीन महात्मा गांधी एंड रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर on some of the philosophical political and socio economic issues of their times and through this debate we will try to understand what kind of um, challenges uh, we are facing in contemporary um, contemporary india and in what ways we can take insights from this debate to resolve some of these uh, complexities in contemporary india so um, uh, uh, this uh, lecture is basically about um, his views on men Uh, his idea of men and uh, then we will try to conclude this lecture by uh, situating rabindranath tagore and his thought in the larger uh, political and historical context in which he was articulating about some of uh, his key ideas and in what ways he was relevant in his time why he was criticized and how he continue to remain uh, relevant for understanding some of the contemporary challenge in modern india so uh, these are some of the thing we will discuss in the concluding part of this lecture so uh, we uh, will start uh, f- first with this idea of man which for tagore is center for everything his views on uh, a number of themes um, whether it is swadeshi samaj samaj nation cosmopolitanism everything revolves around this um, uh, powerful idea of man which we can better understand by uh, looking at this um, uh, quotation from ravindra tagore about uh, the man the search of man for uh, truth and what is the uh, truth of his or her existence and that is the basic uh, uh, basic uh, uh, artifacts or basic um, um, building block of all his arguments so whether it is uh, his serious essays or political uh, writings philosophical writings or it is his paintings songs or other forms of creative uh, uh, creative writings this idea of man is somewhat at the center of all his creative expressions and um, um, uh, uh, writings so from this quotation one can understand that significance of man in his thought and in his philosophy so uh, it's within quote in the history of man there began from the day in many forms in many ways and many languages the answers to the one fundamental question what am i in the true answer to this question lies his joy his glory so that's the search of man and he has understood that he is not simple but hides a mystery of depth within himself and that he will finally know himself only when the veils of the mystery have been pierced through century he has persisted in this in his attempt so that's the real search real journey uh, in the life of men or women so um, what he is basically saying is uh, through all his creative um, uh, creative expression man is in search of asking through many forms through many languages in many ways this fundamental question of who uh, what i am and uh, to get the answer of this fundamental question in that answer lies his true glory or his true joy and that is the basic fundamental search in human uh, individual life so in this uh, journey um, of searching the answer for this question Uh, man has understood that he is not simple so what constitute the man is it his biological or physical being or also there is something beyond the man that transcend his immanence uh, his immediate biological or physical material surrounding so uh, that is uh, something which we come to realize when we try to ponder upon try to understand uh, or try to answer this question what i am so uh, so the uh, journey of man or his intellectual um, uh, search for answering this question who am i 
does not lie merely on this simple understanding of biological or physical being, but also something that transcend. And this is uh, this is what that transcend Tagore consider as a mystery. So, according to Ravindranath Tagore, the primary or the basic or the fundamental responsibility or search in man's life is to unravel this mystery of something which transcends his immediate biological or physical surroundings. And uh, throughout the centuries in uh, Rabindranath Tagore, man is continuously uh, making his effort to understand this mystery of something which transcends. And that uh, leads to some of the fundamental question of origin of man, origin of human being, what is the history, what are the moment and in what ways human being tries to understand himself and uh, develop a relationship between something which is beyond his immediate biological self to the nature, to the society, to the other human being. And that, un, uh, that uh, creative relationship between the man and his or her immediate surroundings be it nature or other human being leads to realization of the self. And in this attempt, so, the, uh, the uh, real uh, task for man is then to understand his self and to understand his self he needs to unravel this mystery which is something that transcends the physical and um, biological being of the self and this point will come, um, uh, come again in a moment. So, that is the uh, understanding of man and this becomes the basis on which his philosophy about some uh, samaj, swadeshi samaj, nationalism, cosmopolitanism, whole philosophical artifacts in, uh, uh, in Rabindranath Tagore thought lies in this basic understanding of man in search of um, this um, mystery in his or her physical biological being. So, that is remain very, uh, uh, very fundamental and that is why many of you might have come across his uh, um, his song, many of his songs where he, uh, he express the uncompromised freedom or unconditional freedom for the expression of human or individual creativity. The idea is the very um, search for understanding the mystery of lies, uh, mystery of life or human being rest on this uncompromised freedom that is given to individual to realize to experience, to understand uh, this mysterious existence in himself which lies behind, uh, um, uh, which lies uh, besides his physical or biological being. So, uh, to realize that he want uh, individual to have uh, complete uncompromised unconditional freedom to explore, to understand such mystery. Rabindranath uh, uh, Tagore also believes that the whole social, political, economic, cultural, uh, 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 cultural um, system or community or uh, uh, solidarity emerges out of this uh, uh, mutual understanding and respect, cooperation and love. Uh, and that will ultimately lead to a more, uh, more robust, more uh, intimate relationship between man and the nature and man and the man. And that is what he, uh, he focused more than the organized uh, uh, rational scientific organization to uh, perpetuate one's narrow individual self interest. So, that is something uh, which Ravindranath Tagore focuses on his ideas on man. So, he further goes on and writes that man and his creative unity and expression is at the center of his thought about Swaraj, Samaj, Swadeshi Samaj, nationalism and cosmopolitanism as I was explaining. So, the idea of man and the creative unity of man with nature and the other human being and the expression of that creativity is something which is central to his notion on Swaraj, Samaj, Swadeshi Samaj, nationalism and cosmopolitanism. And uh, this understanding of man in search of unraveling this mystery in his or her existence is two dimensional. One is more futuristic and the other is uh, social. Futuristic is that man if he or she submit himself or herself to something which is imposed whether by society, by religion 
or by the forces which is outside himself or herself. Uh, that um, deny uh, him or her the potentiality or the opportunity to understand himself or understand the true meaning of his or her existence. So, he want uh, the modern man, the religion of man, uh, the essay he wrote and he explored this point more systematically there that the task of man is to realize or to understand the existence of his or her truth that he or she can realize only when he or she free himself or herself from bondage or conditionalities of all kind, be it social, political, economic, cultural, religious or whatever. So, the ultimate objective of uh, individual or man life is to realize his true being, the uh, meaning of his or her life. So, it is a more, uh, it is on the one hand, he wanted the modern man to understand uh, this. So, uh, uh, by then, he also mean that that kind of man will not try to just imitate or borrow the idea uh, from other uh, context, from other tradition. That is also do not mean that he will remain very narrow uh, or um, uh, in a very uh, uh, fundamental sense uh, indigenous kind of uh, indigeneities um, um, uh, or uh, rooted to his or her on, on, on self. He, uh, he was willing and in many of his expressions and ideas about science or education or economy we will see he is willing or he is accommodating the ideas from other traditions and that he wants as a kind of creative unity or creative uh, accommodation or cooperation with other tradition, other cultures. But he, uh, he wanted the man to understand this fundamental or basic truth of his existence and uh, so, uh, so, in search of that uh, realization, that understanding, he want complete freedom or uh, and that uh, uh, that is applicable in many uh, many uh, many issues um, uh, even in contemporary times so uh, one uh, dimension of his uh, idea on man is more futuristic it wants a new kind of man trying to search his uh, true meaning and the second is more about the social so how this man will realize his or her true nature unless it also understand his self in cooperation, in love, in uh, intimate relationship with other human in the society. And therefore, if you remember the first lecture when he was discussing about uh, nationalism, he considered India's problem is not political but social. Why? Because the social uh, organization is based on cooperation, based on self-sacrifice based on understanding or mutually respecting the needs and the existence of other. And therefore, he believes that um, this man uh, who tries to understand his self can only understand it in relationship with the, uh, with the other. So, um, so in this, uh, 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 this point, one is to understand this larger heuristic principle of his time, where this uh, relations between immanence and transcendence immanence is something more immediate and Im, uh, transcendence is something which is beyond. This is something which is there in other thinkers, uh, certainly in Arvindu Ghosh we are going to uh, discuss, even in Vivekananda, partly in uh, Iqbal and uh, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and many uh, European thinkers as well. So, this uh, uh, dichotomy, this uh, uh, heuristic principle of immanence and transcendence is also there and some uh, he used it very uh, creatively to understand the role of man in the society or in uh, new India. So, uh, this um, uh, views on man in uh, Tagore is expressed in many of his lectures and essays like man or supreme man or the, uh, sorry it should be religion of man. religion of man or man's universe. So, on these essays and certainly more systematically he explained in the religion of man, his views on man. So, uh, in these essays you can find out Rabindranath Tagore views on man. Now, while describing the human nature or human characteristic, he takes into account both the moral and the spiritual aspects of human nature. For Tagore, 
man is inherently moral or ethical and that reflects his true nature that reflects something which is beyond and that moral and ethical part of man can be explained not by his physical biological uh, uh, being but uh, something which is deep uh, deep inside his or her existence so um, in a, a tagore's views or perception of man uh, this moral or ethical side of man if it is allowed to express itself without any restriction and uh, uh, without any kind of hindrance from the outside then uh, he or she will be able to realize himself or herself but also contribute in the uh, betterment of the society or in uh, in the collective uh, life of his uh, or her society or community so uh, ramina tagore is uh, in a sense too radical Uh, uh too radical in his understanding of uh man or the individual or individual freedom and the role of individual freedom for the realization of his self and also for the betterment of the society so uh for tagore this innate nature of human being that is moral and spiritual must be cultivated and it should be allowed to be cultivated without any restrictions without any conditions from the outside forces be it society or the state so tagore then also talks about this dual nature or what is called duality in man's nature for him uh, this duality of man nature is reflected in the animal aspect of man for which the mere fulfillment of his necessities constitute the happiness so that's the uh, one side of man that is similar to other species like animal where man may believe that his real joy his real happiness is there in realization or fulfillment of his uh, necessity or his need so once your uh, once your needs is fulfilled needs here means material needs or your immediate uh, uh, concerns if that is fulfilled and achieved man may feel happy so that's one side of man one uh, kind of uh, nature in human being the other which is more deeper which is more fundamental that is the aspect of universal man who is concerned with neither happiness nor suffering but strives for something greater and this is uh, this something greater is connected to the previous theme we are discussing about the mysterious existence of man when this man come into being what is the origin what is the objective who am i so that kind of question is something which constantly put the man in search of something which is beyond his immediate or biological needs and there he uh, consider it is something which is beyond the happiness or beyond the suffering but it's kind of continuous striving for knowing this um, uh, uh, this uh, greatness this mysterious existence in all of uh, all of us and um, um and it is connected with this uh, expression that divinity lives in man that lim- uh, divinity will emerge uh, can express itself in the uh, conducive uh, environment of freedom or man has not submitted his views his understanding his intellect to the uh, uh, to the uh, masses or uh, to the collective uh, imposition and blindly imitate it that uh, can be developed when uh, the man using his intellect constantly trying to understand this higher or something greater in his or her existence so um, in uh, in this word he used uh, this as perfection of man or personality that he talks about or what he call magnificence so this dual or duality in man's nature is one which is very uh, basic and in many philosophy you know isaiah berlin and many others continental philosophers talking about the lower self and the higher self so the lower self is about the basic cardinal necessities of human existence and higher self is towards realization of something more spiritual something more uh, ethical moral and such questions so a uh, uh, tagore understood this duality in man's nature and uh, he also acknowledged that um, in all of uh, us i mean all of human being there is the expression of divinity divinity in the forms of humanity which allows that being uh, that being to
to connect with others, to relate with others and to develop a relationship of cooperation, mutual trust or love. And in that way, he realized himself or herself, uh, she realized herself and also she connect with the others and form a social, form a collective that helps in the overall uh, development or creation of uh, 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 something which is greater than the individual self. So, uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore uh, did understood this duality in this human nature. Now, um, unlike animals, Tagore further writes, man cannot be conformed to his natural conditions. It is in the crossing of his natural condition that lies his glory. So, that is uh, something about inherent search in man to transcend his immediate physical condition. So, that makes the human species uh, very distinct from the other species in the um, uh, 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 other species. Why? Because the man by his inbuilt uh, uh, nature, which is not just biological or physical, but also something which is transcendental, which transcends their uh, biological or physical needs, cannot conform to his natural condition. Natural condition is mere natural or material condition of his or her life. So, man constantly tries to transcend his material or physical condition in search of something higher, something deeper, something greater and uh, tries to understand this. And as far as man is allowed to uh, search for this greater higher meaning of his or her life and there is on restriction on that and uh, man const constantly strive to understand this higher, uh, higher uh, laws, there lies the glory and uh, that is the whole focus in Rabindranath Tagore, the evolution of man from uh, one kind of a stage to the other kind of a stage and then to the uh, uh, understanding or realization with this immersion of self with this. Uh, so, complete uh, realization of selflessness or existence with self in the community with others based on true love, trust, cooperation is something which remains the ideal for the Tagore and that can be achieved when men realize or try constantly try to understand these greater uh, laws and there is no restriction on that. Now, what we also find that he is not exclusively an individual, he is also one in a spirit with the universal man, under whose inspiration the individual engages in expressing his ultimate truth through crossing nature's limitations. So, this is quotation from Tagore's essays, where he argues that he or the man or any individual is not exclusively an individual, that means confined to him or uh, her physical biological being. It is not uh, very individualistic in, some, in terms of atomistic individual or aut uh, autonomous individual. Um, for Tagore, this individual is one in a spirit with the universal man. Now, this universal man can be considered as something which is in all of us and we are expression of this one universal higher self or universal man and on that basis we try to connect with each other and develop a kind of uh, collective, uh, collective solidarity. So, this individual for Tagore is one in a spirit with the universal man and in understanding or under the guidance or inspiration of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, universal man, he, can, he realize or understand the existence of his ultimate truth. What is the ultimate truth? The realization of uh, the fact that we all are part of same, uh, same, uh, same species or same humanity and therefore, we, uh, we should collaborate, we should uh, develop the relationship with others on the basis of this principle that all in all of us lies something which is part of the same universal man and that will be the true basis of cooperation, true basis of solidarity for uh, for uh, for uh, for Tagore, and therefore one can uh, once we realize this true or ultimate truth of our existence, we can transcend all kind of natural limitations, be it uh, natural in terms of uh, the surroundings, material surroundings of our life, in terms of religious narrow uh, definition of religion, in terms of caste, in terms of ethnicity, in terms of language, 
in so many ways which tries to distinct or differentiate between one kind of man to the other kind of man can be transcended according to Tagore if one believes in this ultimate truth of our existence where we are all part of same uh, universal man or in terms of humanity the understanding of humanity then and that can be the basis of true cooperation between and among different groups be it on the basis of caste, religion, nation, etc. So, that is very uh, crucial understanding of the uh, relationship that individual shares with the universal man. Finally, on this um, uh, discussion on idea of man, uh, uh, Tagore believes that man is a finite as well as infinite being simultaneously and he is finite in his immediate individuality and infinite in his union with the universal spirit. Now, that connects with the individual expression of divinity or universal man with this something which is larger, which is greater than all of us put together. Now, here I mean one needs to understanding of life in uh, Tagore's uh, political uh, philosophy. Here for Tagore, life is something which cannot be measured, which cannot be quantified. It can be valued or that value is something one can realize and that realization comes through this uh, uh, engagement, uh, mental engagement or realization, emotional, uh, psychological realization with the uh, 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 something which is beyond us, something which uh, and we carry in, uh, carry in it. So, this uh, relationship between universal and the particular is very uh, crucial for, um, uh, for Tagore and therefore, he believes that in man you have both uh, finite and infinite at the same time. What is in, uh, finite in man? The immediate individuality, all of us lives in a particular time and a space and that uh, 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 time and a space sets a limit on our understanding or our discretion or our judgment or our, um, um, our grasp of our reality. But that can be transcended once we realize our relationship with something universal and that is the ultimate truth or, uh, of our existence when we realize that we are limited in our time and a space, but at the same time we carry in ourselves the uh, same, uh, same um, divinity or same humanity and once we realize it in each other, then the true basis of uh, cooperation or trust is possible and that is what he calls this uh, uh, finite and infinite um, uh, at the same time in the human natures. Again, this uh, through this quotation, we will try to understand something about his idea on man. So, I will just quote that from the time when man became truly conscious of his own self, he also become conscious of a mysterious spirit of unity, which founds its manifestation through him in his society. So, the realization of man about himself is also to be conscious of a mysterious spirit of unity that unity between self and something which is universal, something which is greater than the self and this found its manifestation through him in his society. It is subtle medium of relationship between individuals which is not for any utilitarian purpose, but for its own ultimate truth. Notice some of arithmetic, but a value of life. Somehow man has felt that his comprehensive spirit of unity has a divine character which could claim the sacrifice of all that is individual in him, that in it dwells the highest meaning transcending his limited self representing his best freedom. Now, there he defines both understanding of man, the consciousness of man about himself, his place in the larger uh, society and also uh, why uh, his life is not just for a utilitarian purpose or some arithmetic calculation but to realize this uh, ultimate truth, true meaning of life and there lies the greatest freedom, ultimate freedom for the human being. So, what he says that uh, when man gets uh, uh, became truly conscious of his own self, that is his own individualistic self, he also become consciousness of a mysterious unity, mysterious spirit of unity that he founds in his society. It is a subtle medium of relationship between individuals that he shares with the other individuals in the society. This relationship between other individuals is not for utilitarian purpose, 
what is utilitarian purpose? We try to develop a relationship with other human being because it help us in achieving our own uh, interest or self interest. Now, uh, this whole concept of civil society if you read in Hegel or in many other thinkers, the uh, relationship between individual is guided by their self interest or maximization of self interest or utilitarian philosophy everything uh, which is uh, 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 good for the greatest number that should be desirable that should be done. Uh, Tagore is uh, uh, someone who is not articulating life or human life in a utility, utilitarian purpose. So, everything is uh, uh, weight or measured on the basis of its util, uh, utility or its uh, on in the basis of its use value. For him the ult, uh, this relationship between man and man is for its own ultimate truth and this is not some. Uh, so, realization of this ultimate truth is the search of uh, human life or man life. So, therefore, uh, once man realized that uh, uh, comprehensive spirit of unity, he also understand the divine character which could claim the sacrifice of all that is individual in So, then once human or man, human being or man realizes this uh, comprehensive spirit of unity, then anything that is individual in his spirit can be sacrificed for the realization of that ultimate truth and that is where lies the uh, best freedom in human life. So, he regards individual as expression of divine, divine is something which is about understanding this greater self or the connection with the universal man in individual soul. So, by uniting with the divine, he can evolve to the supreme man. So, idea of perfection, idea of attaining a personality or character of one's own and not guided by other uh, be it society or religion or the caste or the political organization such as a state. So, one realizes this divinity, then one can evolve into the supreme being where one is evolved with the other. So, the characterization of Gandhi as Mahatma is the greater soul. So, you can realize the pain and suffering or the feelings of others in your own self once you realize this fundamental truth of your existence. So, that is how he, uh, he uh, conceptualized modern man. So, he believed therefore, in the unity of man despite the distinction of time and place, we are all simultaneously conditioned by our immediate surroundings in terms of time and space and yet we realize the unity with the others. So, it is the ability to feel the presence of one spirit in all men that makes one a great soul. So, the idea of Mahatma, so one feels the existence or presence of one spirit in all men or all in one is what makes a soul a great soul or Mahatma. So, uh, the coexistence of finite and infinite man, personal and the universal man characterizes the distinctive conception of man in Tagore's writing. So, this is the perhaps the best uh, way to summarize his understanding of man which characterizes the simultaneous existence of finite that is his immediate biological or uh, physical being with the infinite which is universal being, universal spirit, uh, spirit in man and that is what characterized the conception of man in Tagore writing. So, uh, Tagore was in his uh, 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 definition or understanding of man was trying to create a space for individual choice that stood apart from the imposed collectivities be it traditional Indian institution like caste, religion and patriarchal families or imperial subjecthood of colonial rule or contemporary mass movements for nationalism. So, uh, Tagore in his whole writing, in his whole creative expression in different genre or engagement with other uh, thinkers such as Gandhi and uh, many others, he was trying to create a space for this individual, individual who believes in this uh, simultaneous existence of finite and infinite within his or her own personality. So, he want this individual to have choice and you uh, as you know many of our societies including India deny the individual this choice to think for himself or herself, to decide for himself or herself be it uh, Kaaf Panchayat or uh, uh, some restriction by the state on the freedom of speech and expression. So, all these things are uh, some kind of restriction, some kind of restraint to the individual choice and Tagore 
remains somewhat very critical of this kind of restrictions whether it is coming from the Indian traditional institution like caste, religion or patriarchal families or the imperial rule such as colonialism or British rule in India or the contemporary mass uh, movements for nationalism and we have seen in his critique of uh, nationalism how it denies individual his moral or ethical, uh, ethical search and this is the good point to enter into this debate between uh, Gandhi and Tagore. Now, uh, uh, there is a um, 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 very um, good work on this debate between Gandhi and Tagore by Sabhisachi Bhattacharya and I request you all to um, um, go through this uh, work and many of the themes that we are going to discuss uh, in this uh, part of our lecture, we will discuss it again when we will discuss Gandhi. So, uh, uh, there is this uh, mutual uh, uh, respect or admiration between these two stalwart of modern India, Gandhi and Tagore and yet very uh, strong differences on many social and political issues between them. It is well known that uh, Mahatma Gandhi used to call Tagore the poet or the Gurudev. So, both uh, were in a way deeply uh, emotionally connected with each other's uh, uh, views and role and respected uh, each other's opinion and yet share very strong differences on so many issues. So, in this part of our lecture, we are going to discuss some of those, uh, those differences. So, this part is your Tagore, the Mahatma and the poet, chronologies. So, if you basically go by this Sabhisachi Bhattacharya's work on Mahatma and the poet, uh, there are these collection of letters are divided into different periods. So, in first period from 1915 to 1922, so we can uh, through this uh, chronology, we can situate these two thinkers in the historical context that was unfolding in India. So, during this period, uh, you know Gandhi returned to India, uh, there was um, uh, development for non-cooperation and uh, uh, use of Satyagraha as a political tool and uh, uh, Tagore was someone who realized the uh, role that Gandhi can play in uh, freedom struggle in India. But he was very skeptical of the instrumental use of Satyagraha in the non-cooperation movement by some of the followers of Gandhi to promote bigotry. So, Tagore was someone who want the individual to realize his or her individuality and then act upon those uh, realization and not by blind or mere blind following or mere imitation of a thought even if it is coming from someone like Mahatma Gandhi. So, he was very skeptical of this instrumental use of Satyagraha during the non-cooperation movement especially by many of his followers which in the name of Satyagraha was promoting bigotry. However, Gandhi was aware of the misuse of his ideal of Satyagraha in some instances by some people, but regarded them not as his true follower. He also rejected that it happened in the non-cooperation movement particularly. So, Gandhi even when there was instances of using Satyagraha as an instrumental tool, yet were uh, with the opinion that it is not the, done by the true follower of uh, his idea and he did realize that he particularly he said that it has not happened during the non-cooperation movement. Tagore did not support the boycotting of government schools since there was no alternative school schooling available and Gandhi justified the boycott in saying that the education imparted there will make them helpless and godless. So, there is this famous uh, debate between Gandhi and Tagore about boycotting the government schools during the non-cooperation movement. Uh, Tagore was of the view that as long as there is no viable alternative available for the students, they should not go for boycotting. But Gandhi uh, believed that uh, uh, there is no point having that kind of education which will make them helpless or godless in other sense uh, merely as a kind of um, uh, 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 tool in the whole structure of colonial domination and exploitation. So, Gandhi uh, uh, called for the boycott. But Tagore believed that this kind of boycott without having any alternative is something which is uh, not very helpful for uh, national awakening or political freedom. Tagore was also a skeptical of the charkha and did not think that mere burning of foreign clothes could solve India's problem. He also did not support the Gandhi's obsession of the sins and limitations of western civilization. Instead, he emphasized on taking a broader view of humanity 
and what you find is during this non cooperation movement tagore was promoting for uh, east and west cooperation but in uh, india gandhi was promoting the non cooperation so he wrote a letter to cf andrews andrews and arguing about his ironical situation here in the west he is preaching about east west cooperation but gandhi in india talking about this uh, non cooperation between the uh, between the two and uh, in reply to uh, that gandhi has said that he is also as uh, open or as free to accommodate ideas from other uh, cultures or intellectual tradition as uh, as a uh, poet are referring to uh, tagore but he refused to uh, blown away by any of the ideas so uh, the famous uh, quote we all are aware that i want my um, uh, home or window should be open for all kind of ideas to uh, flow by but i refuse to be flown by uh, any ideas uh, so uh, this uh, uh, this debate uh, help in uh, actually um, um, uh, learning from each other yet at the same time maintaining their uh, maintaining their difference so um, on his position on uh, charkha Uh, because of their economic reason tagore criticized such use of symbol for political mobilization so this uh, debate on charkha becomes more crucial between 1923 and 28 and tagore questioned the economic efficiency of the program and criticized gandhi for using moral language in place of economics and for gandhi this economic or moral is not that distinct it is uh, for gandhi it's in continuum so charkha as he used for the uh, po- political mobilization for realization of uh, swaraj in his terms economic swaraj for uh, him it's a kind of continuum there is no distinction between moral and the economic as um, as tagore was trying to argue uh, how uh, the other difference was that gandhi was opposed to casteism and untouchability but he defended varnashrama tagore was fierce critic of gandhi's position of varnashrama for both political and moral grounds that's the sharp difference between tagore and gandhi and also gandhi and ambedkar we will discuss when we will discuss ambedkar but tagore also saw some uh, problematics in gandhi's thought where on the one hand he criticized untouchability he criticized casteism but he defend uh, defended varnashram and he uh, crit- uh, tagore criticized such uh, defense of varnashrama both on political and moral ground the next period between 1929 to 33 they shared some of the challenges that india was facing that was about rising communalism and uh, they tried to develop some common grounds which can help in mitigating this rise of communalism so tagore also experienced this kolkata riot in 1926 and he therefore wrote very fiercely against uh, communalism and uh, one has to remember during the swadeshi movement also he was very critical of this growing difference between two major communities hindu and muslims and therefore developed some kind of difference and distance with the swadeshi movement so he went on to support straight forward atheism instead of delusive religiosity gandhi was equally against communalism but he could not be expected to employ this kind of approach in the case of atheism so gandhi using a lot of religious vocabulary and uh, to counter even the communalism the uh, religious vocabulary and terms was essential for gandhi and it's part and parcel of his vocabulary of course it has very wider and flexible or accommodative interpretation but for tagore he supported straight forward atheism in fact to counter such challenges between 1934 to 1941 when gandhi made a statement associating the bihar earthquake of 1934 with divine chastisement as the result of continuing caste oppression in the state tagore was shocked to see the irrationality in his argument tagore was aware of the effect gandhi's statement may have on the common people who blindly followed him and ask him clarification but gandhi did not change his take on that so there was a earthquake in bihar in 1934 and gandhi responded to that earthquake by portraying it as a kind of divine chastisement for the caste oppression such kind of irrational unscientific observation by gandhi and also because the 
possibility of its consequences on the common people, Tagore was very critical of such kind of um, uh, utterance. But uh, Gandhi remain uh, uh, remain uh, 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 remain consistent with this position. So what we find is that Tagore and Gandhi had disagreement also on Subhash Chandra Bose being eased out of Congress. So uh, this debate between Gandhi and Tagore, there is also some historical happenings when Subhash Chandra Bose and his politics and policy in the Congress. Um, um, uh, and Gandhi had serious differences with such policies and um, uh, politics, uh, Subhash Chandra Bose had to resign from the presidency of the Congress and uh, there the both also differed. Finally, in summarizing their influential debate, we can find this debate on Gandhi and Tagore on some of the philosophical questions based on Swaraj, state and nationalism. So very briefly on Swaraj and state, what we find is Tagore had more individualistic notion. Individualistic notion as I have explained on his idea of man or the role of man, the freedom of man, of liberty. Gandhi one is more collective, consider, so it is not easy to distinguish one with the other. There is many complementary trends in their thought on man or in their thought on Swaraj also. But uh, um, Gandhi was more practical, more pragmatic in terms of balancing the uh, notion of Swaraj or his ideal Swaraj with the practical necessity of the historical time in which he was trying to mobilize public opinion and um, uh, different sections of society. So uh, uh, in Gandhi you have that uh, pragmatic uh, concern, but Tagore was very radical, too radical in terms of understanding the individual uh, notion of Swaraj. In Tagore's view, society was central to Indian context than the state. For Gandhi, adopting this view was practically not possible. But here again, you see the complementary thoughts in both the thinkers, where certainly for Tagore, the major problem or major uh, challenge before India is the social and not the political. But Gandhi uh, realized that political freedom is as important perhaps as social, uh, uh, social uh, freedom or realization of Swaraj in society or in the field of economics. But uh, uh, for Gandhi also remember his, uh, we will uh, discuss his views on uh, state or in his idea of oceanic circle or bottom up approach. He wanted to uh, create a society which is not governed from top down but from bottom up. But still uh, uh, the role of state and the idea of political uh, freedom is much more uh, uh, much more there in Gandhi's thought than in um, uh, than uh, perhaps in Tagore. But certainly for Tagore, the whole uh, and this he describes in Swadeshi Samaj uh, during this uh, uh, Swadeshi movement, where this uh, real organization of Indian society and Indian context, the uh, uh, the um, primary role is that of society and not that of state where in the western uh, civilization or western society the role of a state or in present uh, modern times the role of nation was more central and uh, uh, Tagore want to uh, continue with organizing the society creating and organizing the Swadeshi Samaj then uh, making the state more central in Indian uh, situation. Um, uh, on views, uh, his views on nationalism, we have discussed that uh, instead of ethnic or chauvinistic form of nationalism, Tagore was more in favor of upholding the universal human being or uh, brotherhood. Gandhi too was aware of the limitation of nationalism, but for him in patriotism lies the path of attaining universal humanism. Evil was only the exclusive selfish and narrowness of modern nations. So for Gandhi and in many other political thinkers as I have said in my introductory lecture, when they were fighting for the nationhood or attaining uh, political freedom from the British, they were also equally mindful of the universal connection or the uh, is role of India in the larger community of nations. Yet many of them believe that India to play a greater role in the community of nation has to attain its own freedom first. It attain its own uh, uh, political freedom from the British first, but there is a difference between uh, uh, between Gandhi and uh, Tagore, where for Tagore it is more about uh, uh, developing the cooperation, dialogue or uh, solidarity than uh, uh, this ethnic chauvinistic uh, nationalism which inherently lead to competition, conflict and violence. 
Similarly, on science and technology, both thinkers in a way share some of the ideas, but they also differ on the use of science and technology, where Gandhi in his critique to modern civilization was critical of uh, the use of many modern technology or big technology. But for Tagore, the role of science and technology can be liberating uh, for the human, uh, human being uh, as well. So finally, on education, what we find is that both Tagore and Gandhi had run schools outside the state-sponsored system. Gandhi in his ashrams and in many of the national schools and Tagore in his experiment in Santi Niketan and Sri Niketan. While both of them emphasized on the use of mother tongue, reflection of Indian life and culture and participatory schooling, they were different in the matter of basic education scheme. So for Gandhi, the Tagore criticism was that the basic education scheme of Gandhi on the ground of over emphasizing material unity. So Gandhi was more towards vocational training, vocational uh, education at the cost of overall development of the people and limiting the poor students to the definitive vocation. So Gandhi, for him, the use of education should be to prepare the men or give the men vocational training for his economic uh, betterment and etc. But for Gandhi, the manual work, therefore the charkha and other symbols that he used, that becomes the means of intellectual training. But for Tagore, the role of education is realizing the man or individual, the true nature, the true character of his being, which is, as we have discussed, the simultaneous existence with the immediate biological physical self with the universal uh, universal uh, self and man so finally on the uh, uh, relationship between the two uh, one uh, one can um, you know, one can understand that gandhi was more a pragmatic political thinkers yet uh, he shares a lot of um, um, ideas with tagore and vice versa, Tagore shared a lot of ideas and have mutual admiration for uh, mutual admiration for Gandhi. But they remain very sharp, uh, 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 very um, uh, uh, they had very different opinion on many uh, many issues, as we have discussed on education, state, or uh, science and technology, and some of the symbolic or irrational, even superstitious expression on the part of. Um, um, of Gandhi, and he was therefore criticized by many of the Gandhi uh, Gandhiji followers also, even when he was uh, regarded as a great thinker. So, in Jawaharlal Nehru's word, which he wrote in his letter to Kriplani on 27th August 1941, this is from the book I have told you about uh, Sabhyasachi Bhattacharya, where he writes that no two person could probably differ so much as Gandhi and Tagore. The surprising thing is that both of these men with so much in common and drawing inspiration from the same wells of wisdom and thought and culture should differ from each other so greatly. So it is something which is very unique about Gandhi and Tagore, where on the many issue, they were uh, deriving inspiration or their source of inspiration remains the same. They, uh, they share some of the, um, uh, some of the common uh, grounds in terms of um, uh, many political or social economic issues of um, India and yet they differ a great uh, uh, deal uh, and that we have just uh, discussed and that is something very uh, very uh, surprising according to uh, according to uh, Nehru but it will be wrong to understand that they do not um, uh, do not Com, uh, complement each other or um, or or respect uh, respected each other so uh, what we find is that both while sharing a friendship or mutual admiration uh, to each other remain consistent with their opinions and uh, in the practical political unfolding of our uh, modern india gandhi uh, did shape or influence a lot of political uh, uh, political programs, but ideals of Tagore remains uh, valid, even when uh, these political uh, events was unfolding, or even uh, in our contemporary times. So, in the words of Gandhi himself, he writes, and I quote, that the poet lives in a magnificent world of his own creation, his world of ideas. I am a slave of somebody else's creation, the spinning wheel. But I may say in all humility 
that we complement each the other's activity. So, this basically summarized the relationship between Gandhi and Tagore, where Tagore and he believed uh, that there is some kind of uh, detachment from the actual immediate need of the politics for someone like him as a poet or as a poet philosopher to reflect about larger uh, aims and objectives of India and how to achieve them and someone who is grounded or embedded in the politics of, uh, of the time. So, the difference will uh, uh, emerge out of these two uh, location or situation of the thinkers and yet both of them believed and in Gandhi's word they actually complement uh, complemented each others each other's work. So, um, that is all on uh, Gandhi, uh, Gandhi Tagore debate. Tagore uh, to conclude um, is uh, someone who, uh, who was far ahead of his times and uh, as I have uh, explained in uh, previous lecture that he saw things, he was more a kind of visionary, uh, visionary thinker who saw things which uh, uh, many of his contemporary could not see and uh, he uh, thought about India or Indian identity which should be rooted in Indian cultural, uh, cultural social ethos and yet should be open or accommodative to the ideas which is coming from the other intellectual tradition. So, more about dialogue and uh, thinking about universal man, cosmopolitan um, uh, ideas uh, that is there in Tagore which perhaps in today's world remain more relevant than he, uh, uh, than he was writing during the anti-colonial struggle. And uh, Tagore um, uh, provides us insights on so many issues and challenges that we face, especially about lot of um, unscientific or uh, unsubstantiated claims and counter claims that we, uh, that we see. So, um, uh, that, uh, that is all on Tagore. So, on this uh, topic which we have discussed, Gandhi and Tagore debate and Tagore's ideas on men, you can look at some of these texts from this uh, Kenneth Duch or Pentham, you can read which is there for other readings also and especially some essays by Tagore on creative unity, men, the religion of men from Ravinna Tagore's selected essays from the Rupa publication and then Sabhisachi Bhattacharya, the Mahatma and the poet and you can also look at a very good write-up on Tagore unlocking cases from Sunil Khilnani's Incarnations, India and 50 Lives and also Two Roads to Decolonization, Tagore and Gandhi by Hiren Gohain, Economic and Political Weekly and the, also the English writings of Ravindranath Tagore, Volume 3 which came from Sahitya Academy and edited by Sisir Kumar Das. So, that is all on uh, Ravindranath Tagore. Thank you for listening. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss Arvindo Ghosh. Thank you.